I'm gonna teach a method for painting really simple succulents. Um, it is a class that I've taught previously and it's a really, really easy way of making a kind of intentionally wonky succulent um, without having to have the pressures of being able to really realistically draw. First thing that you're gonna do is find an image of a succulent that you like and pay really close attention to the colors in it. In plants, um, colors kind of fall within similar shapes or shades and tones. So even some will kind of fall in this range or this range. The one I'm looking at is mostly blues and purples. So if you think of a rainbow going from red all the way to purple, any colors that are two or three um, next to each other, so red, orange, yellow, yellow, green, blue, those colors will play nice with each other. Complementary colors, colors that usually look really nice next to each other, end up making brown. So if you have two complementary colors in your palette, I recommend taking one of them out. So a complementary color would be red and green. So if you have a red in your palette and a green in your palette, you don't want them to play with each other. If you have a purple and a yellow, those two will cancel each other out. So you don't want those playing with each other. Um, and same with blue and orange. So this is a really good tip too if you're um, giving your kids some paint to work with. If you end up giving them those complementary colors, usually they end up with a brown painting in the end because they just mix them all together. So if you want something that's still somewhat like nice and has good color, pick something that's um, within the same little color family and that will keep that from happening. So now that I have my image and I know my colors, I'm actually gonna just draw out really loosely um, the succulent that I want to do. I like to do the rim really wonky. Um, so usually when you're trying to do something three-dimensional um, in an art piece, the same curve here would match the curve down here, but I'm actually gonna cheat that and not have it match up properly to just um, make it look more like I'm okay with it being imperfect and not realistic. And then I'm not even really gonna pay much attention to the picture anymore. I know what colors I wanna work with. I'm just gonna start adding those in. of the darker blue now, and I'm just gonna start adding a little bit of the more teal blue. And now I'm not layering it up as much as before. I'm actually kind of adding it into spots that I see don't really have a ton of color in them. And I'm just gonna keep doing that. I'm gonna go with the um, green and then the lighter green. All right, at this point I'm pretty much happy with how this is all coming together. So now I'm going to work on the base. And before I've been working in watercolor, you don't have to though. Um, you could work in acrylic and just really, really water it down. So for the base, I'm gonna go really simple and have it just be black. So I'm gonna use the same brush I was using before. I like using um, a flat brush like this, especially for the vase, because you can get nice crisp lines around the side by using the edge. I'm gonna start off by just doing the outline of the pot. And anytime you're going behind the plants, you just wanna make sure that you don't go straight through them. So here's, I bet it's a little trickier here because I know wanted this to be a little layered over top of the pot. And when I'm working with the black paint, I'm not really going into the water so much. Um, Cause in this case, I want it to be pretty pure black. And every time you add water, you're diluting it a bit. But I will use it for the soil. 
For that part, I actually just want it to be more like a gray. So I didn't even dip into the paint that time. I just rinsed my brush so that I knew it would be not completely saturated in paint. I even like to kind of fade it into the plant a little bit, just so you don't have that like stark transition line there. For this part, you're really just gonna do totally whatever speaks to you, random triangles or little crosses or just circles or dots. Um, if you're not confident in that, you could also use your paintbrush actually to like create your own little stamp. It's a pretty meditative style of painting where you're doing repetitive patterns um, and not really having to worry about um, perfection. So it's a great one to do right now as a kind of mindfulness activity. Especially with working on a white background, it can be um, really easy to dirty up that white background and then feel like you've ruined the whole thing and then struggle to try to cover it up with more white and then the white doesn't really match. Um, so what I find with this is if I have spots on it that I don't really like, or even if the balance is a little bit off, I'll go in and add a little decoration in the back. So this canvas that I have was actually repurposed, so it already had some kind of nicks and scratches on, the, on it, so I can just go in and add like a couple of little Swiss crosses. And that's pretty much it. So you can keep going in and adding color here and there, um, darkening up some of the black, but for the most part, that's the technique to do this. And I hope you enjoy.